Welcome back to Turn Your Devil Inside Out, Lesson 4, Terms of Endearment. So what we're going to do at this time is I want to recap on how we got to the word alive and how we did that was we started out with the word, writing the word devil out. And then we turned our devil inside out. And what that means is literally taking the word devil and rewriting it backwards, starting with the letter L. And that will look with like this, L, I, V, E, D. Okay. Which means lived. So now we got the word lived. And if you have watched all the videos from beginning up until now, then you will know that lived is a past tense word. And we do not want to live in a past. We want to live currently right now in the present heading toward our future so what we need to do because guess what the devil is not in front anymore he's in the back so what we need to do is we condensed him we made him smaller so in order for us to live currently presently and to walk towards our future we have to get rid of the devil right and how we do that is we take you know jesus died for our sins and that represents placing a boundary, bam, placing a boundary on the devil. And so now that the boundary has been set place, but of course you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior to receive that boundary, right? You have to declare and decree that you accept Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, um, for that boundary to take effect. So once you have that boundary, guess what? Guess what you can do? You can now drop the devil like God kicks Satan out of heaven, okay? And so when you do that, that leaves us with just the word live. And I'm still going to use red because that represents the blood of Jesus, okay? Because that's he's the one who saves so now he placed that boundary up for us we are able to drop the devil and so now we are living we are living presently present tense right we're no longer living in the past and so to get to the word alive here's what we do um if you go back to the last uh video I shared with you where I was at um, a school, IDMR, and where I learned at that school was, you know, A equals Elohim. And also Elohim means God in Hebrew. And we also know, according to scripture, that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are one and the same. So according to scripture as well, it says no one can come to the Father except those who follow Christ, right? So if we need to follow Christ, then he would be the letter A that will need to be in front of the word um, live, right? And so I'm going to choose the color blue, and I'm just going to add the letter A. And I'm using blue because I feel that the color blue resonates how God's love is as big as the ocean, okay? That's just how I feel in my experience with God. His love is as big as an ocean. Um, you know, it is so vast. His love for us is so vast. So, and it runs so deep as well. So now we have the word alive. This is where 
we are now following Christ Jesus into the freedom, into our purpose, into uh, what it is that God has called us to do, right? And so with the terms of endearment lesson, that is to literally break down um, God's terms for us, his conditions um, according to us following Christ in order for us to be um, used, right? And so, um, and there we have it. We are alive. And so I'm going to continue on with this lesson. And I'm going to explain to you what alive is um, using the definition and a few scriptures that the Heavenly Father has showed me uh, of how this works, how we remain alive, okay? Not just only following Christ Jesus, but as long as we're following him and we receive the Holy Spirit, there is another level to that. And this is the, the, the video to explain all that. This lesson is to explain all that whole level of following Christ to not only be um, be reborn again, but also to help others be reborn again. Okay, so let's continue forward. Romans chapter 6, verse 12 through 13. You do not let sin control the way you live, nor do you give in to sinful desires. You do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, you give yourselves completely to God as those that are alive from the dead and surrender your whole being to him to be used for righteous purposes, doing everything that God approves as instruments of righteousness for the glory of God. Now let's define the word alive to gain deeper insight. By definition, alive means of a person, animal, or plant living, not dead. The definition for living is being in a state which organs perform their functions in an active action or usage to the routine conduct and maintenance of life. Organ comes from the Latin word organum which means an instrument or tool. The Greek word for instrument is hoplon, and that means any tool or implement for preparing a thing. Now, the question that we should be asking ourselves at this moment is, what is that thing that God is preparing us for? Well, let's go back to the definition of terms of endearment for the answer. So, apparently, God is preparing us, preparing us for the act or process of inspiring love or affection under set provisions and conditions, which may be undertaken as an agreement upon requirement in accordance to one's wishes or in one's way. And we all know whose way we need to follow. And now that we know whose way we need to follow and why, let us dive deep into our Heavenly Father's terms of endearment by looking to Ephesians chapter four, verse one through six, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 11. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Therefore, I, a prisoner to serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God to live a life that exhibits godly character moral courage, personal integrity, and mature behavior. 
a life that expresses gratitude to God for your salvation with all humility, forsaking self-righteousness and gentleness, maintaining self-control with patience, bearing with one another in unselfish love, make every effort to keep the oneness of the spirit in the bond of peace, each individual working together to make the whole successful. Ephesians 4, verse 4 through 6. There is one body of believers and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when called to salvation. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us, all who is sovereign over all and working through all and living in all. Second Peter chapter one, verse three through seven. His divine power has granted us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness and steadfastness with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love. Second Peter chapter one, verse eight through 11. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For, ever, for whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. For in this way, there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, based on what is stated in the scriptures read, it is clear to see that our Heavenly Father's terms of endearment is morality and virtue. Amen. To get a better understanding, let's break down virtue into five categories of virtue. I am using the Greek concept of virtue for according to the Greeks, the notion of virtue is connected to the notion of function. We can define function as working or operating in a proper or particular way. And we can also agree that this is exactly what the Lord wants us to do. Function properly according to his will for our lives. Amen. The first virtue is courage. The second virtue is bravery, which enables us to do well, even in the face of danger. We all may have courage, but not all of us may have the courage to be brave. For encouragement, look to Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 8. Do not be afraid of them or their hostile faces. For I am with you always to protect you and deliver you, says the Lord. The third virtue is temperance, which means uh, moderation or self-restraint in action or statement, including the indulgence of appetites or passions that are declared horrible for your temple. For encouragement in temperance, look to 
Titus chapter 2, verse 11 through 14. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. The fourth one is justice. We all know what justice is physically. However, spiritual justice is a must. Holy Spirit revealed to me that justice is the acronym for just us together in peace. We all know where our peace comes from, Christ Jesus. And when you are in peace, you are in harmony with God. This is that unique personal relationship established over time for encouragement to justice. Look to Isaiah chapter 58, verse 2. They seek me day by day, and they desire the knowledge of my ways, like a people that has done righteousness and forsook not the ordinances of their God. They ask of me righteous ordinances. They delight to draw near unto God. And the final virtue is wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to integrate applied knowledge, prudence, which are skills and sound good judgment used as a resource for mindfulness and elevated wisdom, which is Holy Spirit intel where we will gain insight into the deepest of truths for encouragement to um, elevated wisdom we look to john chapter 16 verse 13 through 14. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. The spirit does not speak on his own initiative. He will tell you only what he has heard from me. He will declare, disclose, and show you as many things as he will. He will speak and the coming things he will tell you. He will bring me glory to tell you whatever he receives from me. The Greek word for virtue is arete, which means a virtuous person whose course of thought, feeling, and action is through moral goodness. The definition for virtuous person is one who has the ability to just naturally flow as a person of strong character and which throughout life attempts to develop means to help individuals develop excellent character. And that concludes video two of lesson four. Thank you for tuning in. Blessings to the viewers, hearers, and doers of this word in love and light. Share, like, and subscribe to my channel. Until then, meditate upon God's word and stay in tune for lesson four, video three. God bless.